Good morning. We're once again here at Perumin Mining Convention and Extemin. And I'm here with uh, Roy Jacola, which is Director for Business Development of CAMESE, which is a Canadian Association of Mining Equipment and Services for Export, right? That's correct. And um, you're here in quite a big uh, number. For uh, Can The Canadian pav pavilion is quite strong here, right? It is. We have some 40 companies here. Uh, traditionally, we have always had a very large contingent here. In fact, as early as 1980, when I was first here, we had uh, almost 20 Canadian companies. So it's been a very popular uh, region, geography, and country for Canadian mining suppliers. And how have... It's interesting that you were here. Could you tell us a bit about your first visit here? And how have you seen... Uh, uh, the changes you've seen in these years? Well, you can imagine in 1980 I was a much younger man. Uh, in, in that year there was uh, many things happening in Peru. Uh, for example, uh, uh, President Belalunde was being inaugurated for a second time and I remember seeing him in that period. There was a cholera epidemic here. The Sendero Luminoso was early in its early stages. There were a lot of problems uh, that were the country had to deal with, and, and so coming in from Canada, we saw many problems. And, and uh, at that point, it was difficult to understand how a country could survive many uh, challenges like that. Uh, however, uh, the country has come beautifully through those issues uh, because of the strength of the people, the uh, resolve of the. Uh, of the, uh, mm -hmm. the community, and so it's it's wonderful to come back uh, many many times after that through the 90s and then even till today to see uh, the wonderful improvements that there are here. Uh, one other point about 1980 when I was here that was the inaugural year of the mining convention and it was held in Lima and it was called Technomine and uh, I actually have a photo of myself uh, as a uh, an expert in mobile mining process. Uh, from that period. And uh, how has the mining industry in Peru changed for, in your opinion, over these decades? Well, in 1980, uh, it was uh, about 10 years after the invention of mobile trackless mining. Uh, before that, uh, before 1970, mining was a uh, rail haulage uh, kind of uh, mining method. And uh, Canada was the leader in developing a trackless mining solution where trucks and uh, loaders were used other, rather than uh, trains. Um, so what would this imply for the mining operation? Well, it would mean efficiency and uh, safety uh, and uh, more bulk mining uh, and also more uh, opportunity to, be, to use uh, variability as part of the mining process. Mm -hmm. Whereas you have a track and you have to stay on the track, with a mobile vehicle you don't have to stay on the track, you can be much more uh, variable. And you have quite a bit of experience in, in mobile equipment. What could you tell us about its importance for the mining sector? Well, I remember being here in, uh, in 80 and 82, uh, traveling from Lima and from Arequipa into the mountains, staying the week, mm -hmm. going into a new mine every day, talking to the operators, the mining operators, and, and, and explaining to them what the values of this evolution to the new kinds of mining methods, uh, what it would do for the mining industry. And the industry was very receptive to that. So uh, Peru is, uh, has... Uh, uh, taken wonderful advantage of new technologies. Of course, uh, through the last uh, 33 years, there's been a, a lot of uh, further evolution, uh, and I've been involved with very, uh, many aspects of that uh, through my technology skills. And what are the, you would th say, the most important technological trends or innovations for the mining sectors recently? Well, mining, the mining industry has typically lagged behind other industries that are more fixed plant. It's much easier to automate, for example, to mechanize and automate fixed plant because it's not going anywhere. However, mining is uh, by nature a materials handling exercise and when you where you are today you're not going to be tomorrow because you're constantly moving ahead drilling breaking rock and moving rock and uh, so the challenge is to uh, understand where the process is in real time so in the last 10 to 15 years there have been a variety of technology solutions that have allowed us to um, implement uh, more efficiency and that would include 
radio communications, something I was involved with for about 20 years, sensors uh, to uh, detect where the vehicles are and uh, also uh, detecting safety issues, and more uh, recently autonomous systems where the operator can move further away from the danger zone and uh, allowing the machines to operate by themselves with the operator either visually seeing the, the equipment that is operating or in fact even being on surface and operating the equipment underground. And looking through a monitor? Yes, uh, first of all line of sight and then secondly through a monitor. Uh, and the future uh, that is coming now uh, is autonomous mining where we teach the, uh, the, the machine to do a work cycle and we simply hit the button, button and say go from waypoint to waypoint and the machine actually does this on its own. But I guess given the surface, which is always unequal, it's very difficult to teach a machine to where to do the, the where to move around, given that it's not a uniform place, right? Well, yes, uh, we take uh, advantage of many of the uh, technology advances from other industries uh, and uh, that's where mining has to learn that they don't only have to solve their own problems, they can go see the medical industry, the information technology industry, the nuclear industry for uh, productivity and safety solutions. And the mining industry is starting to do that. Um, whereas uh, uh, today uh, the industry is, uh, is continuing to look at that. One of the things that is missing is uh, an approach that is, that is a systems engineering approach. And uh, I actually spent uh, several years in the space industry recently and it was a wonderful uh, uh, value that the mining industry can, uh, can take from that. Today the uh, mining industry sends people underground and in many cases at uh, lunchtime or at the end of the shift it's a rationalization of a failure. Right. And uh, whereas if it was a more systems engineering approach taken, uh, the industry would know what is going to happen uh, before, uh, before the failures can occur and they can correct for the problems. So you think they have to take a more, uh, uh, they have to take an approach in terms of log logistics, uh, a more efficient planning approach? Exactly. Logistics is a good word because it's a very general word, it's a very large word. Um, knowing where the process is in real time is a critical issue and it's something the underground mining industry struggles with because we don't have the, uh, the advantage of having GPS. Right. The open pit industry in the early 90s uh, took full advantage of global positioning when 24 satellites were put into a geosynchronous orbit around the earth and we knew where where the process was in real time and every transportation industry took advantage of that whether it was rail or road or sea or air. Uh, underground is diff diff different because uh, we can't use GPS and so we have to use some pseudo solutions we, uh, to trick the, the, the machine to knowing where it is in real time. When we solve that, once we know where the process is, we can start to improve it. So looking to the future, you think this are very exciting times, I guess, also given the, the moment we're living, right, with uh, prices going down, costs coming up, so I guess uh, efficiency will be uh, where we'll be using more and technology can help us. That. Efficiency, uh, uh, the industry is in a difficult period today. Uh, because I'm a little bit older, I've lived through uh, four of these cycles. They happen about every 10 years, but the people that have lived through, through them understand that the mining industry comes back very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes back, it comes back stronger and it starts to implement new technologies. So hopefully these new technologies will take them even further for the next years. Right? Exactly, and there's two approaches to implementing technology. The first is the incremental approach um, uh, that the mining industry likes to employ. Uh, one of the difficulties the mining industry has is that uh, I mentioned that the cycle is 10 years. Mm -hmm. Other industries such as oil and gas, um, nuclear, um, others uh, have a 20-year cycle for technology so that when you start to implement something, an idea uh, of a revolutionary change, it's 20 years before you implement it. Unfortunately, in mining, after 10 years, mm -hmm. The price uh, falls to the floor and everything stops right. and, and, and everything gets derailed. And right. so we have to learn as an industry that we have to charge through that uh, down period and continue on to the on the road of technology. One major company is actually doing that and it's Rio Tinto. 
they, uh, they uh, continue to deploy uh, autonomous systems in their open pit uh, mining industry, even though the, uh, the industry went into free fall in 2008. Right. And uh, it was very impressive for them to do that. And that's the kind of mindset the industry needs in order to implement new technology. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Roy. Thank you. Thanks.